It's called Amplify. On the Christmas of my 13th year, my parents handed me a gift wrapped in light blue snowflake paper. I meticulously tore at the tape to reveal a rainbow cable wound up tight with a note tucked inside. Try to find the rest of your present. So I bounded downstairs to the basement where I found my Ibanez electric bass starter set, all black, amp included, with a big bow on the box. Naturally, I screamed. <laughs> I started clawing at cardboard, tearing through staples with uncalloused fingers. That evening, my brother and I played Come As You Are by Nirvana over and over and over and definitely not until it sounded good and not until we got it right, but just because we felt like it and it felt amazing. My brother with his red and white guitar slung low, me nearly swallowed under the weight of the bass, both of us breathing up lyrics lurking from the bottom of our bellies, feeling on fire, feeling invincible, feeling a freedom like we never knew it before. This is the day that I started to find my voice. Lucky to have endless encouragement and a basement big enough to grow in, I grabbed a girl who knew how to play guitar and a girl who wasn't scared to try and play bang on the drums. And naturally, we started a punk band, filled notebooks and binders with lyrics written on the back of the bus about love like we hadn't even felt it yet and the boys that we already didn't trust. We were big hearts beating out of rhythm and we didn't give a shit because we were helping our voices grow. Tacked a coat hanger to the ceiling and strung the microphone cord through so we could scream into it while our fingers fumbled over frets. We were so bad and it was so beautiful. Over a decade later, I still don't feel like I'm good at much. Except for walking away from something when it no longer feels fun. My guitar gets covered in dust. My bass is in Massachusetts. Sometimes I go weeks without putting pen to page. There will be a while where things go dark. I think we all eventually find that place where we start taking ourselves too seriously. We start doubting why we're doing the things that we once found freeing and suddenly we're doing them less and less. Our calluses fade. Our voices grow quiet. There is no romanticized moment here. No turning point that'll make your voice burn bright again. You just have to work through it. Learn from the quiet, the soft, but rebuild your backbone strong. Speak your story loud through your microphone mouth. Find the music hidden in each of your moments, and when someone asks you why, why you write, paint, play, sing, create, remember your roots. Remember the first time that you were bad at something, and how beautiful it felt. created out loud. I put this all together for you guys to have a safe space to share. Um, I've traveled a lot and done a lot of spoken word. I started in college and I've just been going and going. When I came to Huntsville, I saw a lot of beautiful literary people and I didn't know how to get them all together because I wanted to hug all of you at once. <laughs> and so this is what I did. Um, anyway, that's a little bit about it. The, we do them every month, so um, I'm just going to read one more poem now. It's called... Dreaming of the Desert. Every night, my mother dreams her fingers triggers, runs them along the seams of her pants, places bullets in her pockets as a reminder of the ones spared, fills her boots with empty shells in memory of those that weren't. When she crawls into my room, Teeth made of capsules, her body is a sandstorm pressed low to the ground, sweeping cautious. She carries pictures on her fingernails and asks if she can show them to me. She lays the squares of old blood on the floor as she starts speaking of the distance between her hands. They would strap them in and stack them, sometimes five high, these bruised bodies weighing 100 pounds more than her own, wrapped in layers of equipment, helmet, flak jacket. You can never feel vulnerable there. 
You can never feel light. Each photo she lays on the floor with the steadiness of stretchers. They would use whatever they could to put the pieces back together. Duct tape, super glue, treated bodies like leaky pipes, swore that this was just another job, but I know she does not remember the way home this time because her body is a deflated heat wave, dragging sweat from pores so thick you'll forget how to run. Chick porcelain runs rampant under her skin, salt and dirt cake her mouth. She never learned how to swallow all of this. My mama was a warrior long before she felt she was a weapon. I tell her, your hands were natural born healers and they will continue this way until you've turned to dust. You are just trapped in a war between your love and your loyalty. Speak the names of your moons and demand to know why they pull you. Your body has pushed lives back into existence. Your hands have provided miracles. Your breath has jump-started lungs. You may be lost now, but your family knows your roadmaps. Warrior, healer, life giver. It is okay to be the broken one sometimes. She leaves my room lighter walking, shedding the skeletons she kept trapped under her skin for so long, and exhales a wind spinning desert storms on my floor. at the next Out Loud, which um, is going to be cool. I'm releasing my first ever poetry book. Yay! Um, so that's... Yay! Uh, September 16th, and it's at 6 o'clock. It's at Lone Mill in the classroom if you want to come out. Books for sale. There'll be an open mic. You can come and read. We can talk more and hug more, and that'll be cool. So this next poem, last poem that I'm going to read, is uh, from that book, so I wanted to get you guys a little teaser. Dear tree trunk, how often do you clean the dirt from your fingernails, begging for each crack and crease to be polished, clicking compulsively, craving to look new again, but really, all you are doing is packing down the dirt, pa packing down the dirt so that it holds itself to you tighter and tighter. Pressure is the greatest weapon that we have. Just ask your friend Gravity, who's been tugging at your branches, pestering you closer, waiting for you to snap. Lay your body down beside her for a while instead of walking your roots all over her. You'd always dream yourself broken, but you wouldn't admit it to anyone but the stars when you were alone together each night, whispering windy love songs into the breeze, wishing each leaf into a supernova. Set yourself ablaze, bursting light from your fingertips. You'd be a pretty firework. Though I know your greatness will not be measured by the explosion, you were once so small. Can't you see how far you have already come? Each spring allows you to expand, create new angles, erase the old, try again. You are so full of second chances, so promise me, you will never stop trying to grow. Leave the dirt under your fingernails. It suits you, and I love the way it feels on my skin. Give out some shame. Tell me your story. I will never stop listening to that song in your spine. With all the love I have to give, sincerely, the sky. <laughs> <laughs>